Hello everyone, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed, the television edition for August 1st, 2012, just after 8 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone, coming to you as always from the QCNews.com studio, specifically Studio F. Ladies. Hello, ladies. <laughs> hey, aren't you gay? I am, but not in Studio F. No, not in Studio F. <laughs> oh, All boy. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Got a little Barry White going oh, on. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I am Matt Connerton, of course, and I'm unleashed. He's unleashed. I keep forgetting to show up with the dog collar so I can whip it at the I camera. I got to bring one over. That's what I'll do for you. That, that'd be great. Thank you. Boy, that's a conversation I never expected to have. I know. Um, that's what friends are for. Yes. To my right, of course, is Chris Rose. Hi. I'm, I get to put the. I'm looking at the phone, but hey, how's it going? Chris is, uh, of course, uh, typically uh, on this show with me, as well as uh, he hosts the show uh, Sunday nights with Dan Randlett, VE, and of course Friday nights he's the co-host on We'll Let It Large Gone Global. Global. Which brings me to on my left is Glenn R. J. Willett. How are you, Glenn? Well, you know, we missed our Coco host last week. Yes, I was uh, otherwise disposed. Were you, were you missed Coco in Laconia? Missed a phenomenal show. <laughs> I, I, did, I did not have any Coco. We, I, we actually right. talked about the planet. Oh, did you? No, yes. Well, the question was asked, uh, is the planet uh, on planet Mars? Is it on the moon? Where is the it's planet? planet Earth. <laughs> the I'm, only planet that matters. I made a, a small joke that you can, if you're in your car, you can get the planet from here to here. It's literally like this little... Mm -hmm. little tiny spot that you can catch it. Yes. Yeah, well, and, but and, and but that's said, that. And I said, is it an FM station? He said, yeah, but it's not very powerful. <laughs> well, it is. You get this little window of opportunity to listen to the planet. Look at the mountains. Well, I have to understand, it, it's, it's up in Plymouth. It is. It's central New Hampshire. So it's uh, Manchester, you know, I mean, Hooksit is really about as far south as you can get it clearly. And then once you get into Manchester, it's difficult to get the planet. The planet 100.1, New Hampshire's real rock. Real rock. Yes. Like Why am rock. I not employed by that station? Because you don't rock. I, because I make fun of it. That's. Well, yeah, that, that'd be that'd be a good uh, that'd be a good guess. Um, so, welcome to the show. Uh, there is lots and lots to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. I did put up a new Express Edition this week's Express Edition. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes when I talk too fast, I go to say Express Edition, and it comes out Express e Express Edition. Express Edition. Express yep. Edition. Um, I like sound like uh, I sound like Cindy on. Uh, Brady Bunch. Cindy Br uh, on the Brady Bunch trying to say, uh, what was it, something in applesauce? Uh, if seashell, sea she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, seashells, by the seashore. You know they're trying to reboot that? The Brady Bunch, really? Yeah. No. Vince Vaughn is behind the project. I don't know. And Stephen Schwartz's son is going to help produce it. Oh. Oh, they're actually going to do a new series then. They're going to oh. do a new series, but it's going to take place with Bobby Brady uh, getting remarried and was she he, has kids. Was he the youngest Bobby? He yes. was. I think he was the one who had the most arrests on the. So what is he now? Forties. I don't think they're actually going to get the real. What's the, sorry, I had to. No. That's my inter I just read it today, so. Quite all right. I'm your entertainment guru, Chris Rose. But uh, what what I want to start with is um oh that's okay uh I, I was uh, offended and I, I did talk about this on the Express edition and I want to address it again here because I want to get you guys in on this. Um, Joe Kelly Lavasser, who is an alderman at large here in uh, Manchester, correct? Glenn, you you know you know about and who's that. now airing it live on Channel Twenty Three. That's true. He's on he's on Channel Twenty Three right now in, in the same uh, time slot, but uh, but of course QC News is the place to be here yeah, in Studio going. F. Yes, um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, Joe Kelly Lavasser, and, and let me start. And I, I said this on the Express Edition. And I'll say this again here too. Um, I, I I respect him. I, I mean, I don't know him that well. I've talked to him a couple times briefly, run into him here and there, and we're Facebook friends, which doesn't mean anything. Right. But, um, you know, I mean, I, I respect him in, in the regard that uh, I respect people who work hard, who work really hard. And Joe Kelly Lavasser, from what I know of him, is a type A personality, much like myself, who uh, is just constantly working. He's a very hard worker. Very hard he's worker. Extremely hard worker. You know, he's, he's, he is an office holder. He's an alderman here in Manchester. He's a and lawyer. A, very, very active in, in, in uh, politics. Uh, yes, he's also a, an attorney. Uh, he uh, is also a restaurant Theos. owner. He owns Theos here on Elm Street in Manchester. He's got two kids. He's got two kids, so he's a family guy. And he's on the air right now hosting his talk show. That's right. On TV23. Uh, Don't with, switch. Uh, Will Infantine. Don't switch. Don't switch. You will regret it. Yes. We're You'll unleashed. be unleashed. That's right. We're unleashed. They're not. They're on a leash. They're on a leash. As well they should be. Are we mourning 
Gore Vidal. I just happen to notice we're all wearing black. Uh, no. no, I'm mourning the death of the American spirit, and uh, you guys can mourn whatever. Oh, but really? Gore Vidal did die at 86. Um, but uh, so so I, I respect him. I respect people who work hard. Um, as as someone who works hard myself, and and, and I, I mean I'm the kind of person I if I don't if I'm not doing too much, I feel like I'm not doing anything. So I can relate to him in, in that regard. Um, he's a Republican. He is a bomb thrower. Uh, would you agree with that, Glenn? I mean, I'm not asking you to. I, I know you and he are on good terms, right? You don't have any issues with Well, sometimes with we are. We, 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 we hit our buttons sometimes. But, yes. But I will tell you that uh, when uh, when when uh, a joker loves her and uh, finds that I'm right, mm -hmm. he gives me credit for it. Well, that's good. So that's, he, is a, he can be a fair person. That's, that's very good. But sometimes, as we all are, we get very involved in our politics. And sometimes we can get a little bit hot under the collar. Yes. Because we believe, we have passion about what we do. Yes. So, you know, it happens to all of us. Don't make excuses for him, Glenn. I'm not. I'm just saying it <laughs> I'm just. I'm just kidding. No, that's a, that is a fair point. And we've all said things uh, where we've been intemperate and, and perhaps uh, said things over the line. Um, I do it every single week on the show. But, uh, so, there's this gaffe that Obama made. Uh, of course, uh, you know, everyone's heard it by now that you didn't build that thing. Um, and, of course, if you listen to the actual clip, if you or watch the actual clip of Obama speaking, it's pretty clear that he was talking about infrastructure. He was talking about roads and bridges, saying that, you know, well, he starts. Well, you know what? Here, I'll, I think I have it. Uh, I think I have it ready here. Let me let me play this for you and then we'll discuss. And And I know this has already been hashed over in the media quite a bit. I'm just recapping because do it this. Again today. Oh, of course. Yeah. And this leads into my Facebook exchange with Joe Kelly Lavasser, which offended me, and I, I took what he said to me personally regarding this, but not for the reasons that you might think. So just bear with me. Let's just quickly review Obama's comments. If you've been successful, you don't. You didn't get that on your own. You, you didn't get that on your own. I, I'm always struck by people who think, well, it must be because I was just so smart. There are a lot of smart people out there. It must be because I worked harder than everybody else. Let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of hardworking people out there. He does, yes. If you were successful, somebody along the line gave you some help. There was a great teacher somewhere in your life. Somebody helped to create this unbelievable American system that we had that allowed you to thrive. Somebody invested in roads and bridges. If you got a business, that you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. The internet didn't get invented on its own. Okay, so that's the clip. So and Al Gordon didn't invent it either. So the, that's the point right. he was trying to make is the roads right. and bridges that lead to your successful business. Yeah, you didn't highways. build those. That right. The, state, uh, the, 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 uh, the airports and the, uh, the, the, the infrastructure, the train, the rails. Right. It's the American people that pay for that. Yeah. Right. And we as businessmen, we use those to bring our products. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a hit, wash in, wash out. Yeah. So, yeah, without the government, a lot of these people who made big money wouldn't have made the money because they would have had to have spend it. Right. I mean, it's a wash. I think people need to grow up. I mean, uh, come on. Uh, they took it out of context. Exactly, exactly. It's very clear, if you listen to the entire clip, uh, what he was saying. And he was talking about the infrastructure and saying, you didn't build that. He's not literally saying, if you have a business, if you're successful, you didn't build that. But you did get some help. For you. We all benefit from uh, this uh, American system of, of roads and bridges and things like that and the Internet and... And he also mentions, too, you might have had some help along the way from a good teacher and whatnot. You know, we're a team. We, we're we, all paying the tax. Exactly, exactly. But uh, you would not know. In fact, if you get all your information, as a lot of Republicans do, not all, but many, if you get all of your information from conservative talk radio and Fox spews, then you've only heard probably four words out of that entire clip. You've only heard... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, not only four words. You've heard, you've heard the, the, the part where he says, if you have a successful business, you didn't build that, and that's all you've heard. 
you haven't heard these sentences immediately before that or immediately after. And even if you did, even if you did hear the whole thing, as long as Rush Limbaugh and Fox Spews are telling you that, well, obviously he means if you have a business, if you're successful, you didn't do that yourself, um, you're going to believe, of course, that, well, yes, that's what he's saying. He's saying government did it for you. That clearly is not what he's saying. Now, it's easy to take his comment out of context because uh, I will criticize Obama in this sense. He did speak inartfully. His choice of wording was clumsy. He should have, instead of just saying, you know, if you have a business, you didn't build that, even though he was obviously referring to roads and bridges, he should have said, you didn't build those roads and bridges, and those yeah. roads and bridges help you. He could have been clearer. Yeah, so he was clumsy, and he was caught up in the moment. He was clumsy about how he said it. Um, that's my read on it. So Joe Kelly Lavasser puts on his Facebook page, this is where it started. He put, you didn't build that. The four words that guarantees Obama is a one-term president. You didn't build that. Someone else made that happen. Too rich, bummer. You didn't build that. What a moron. Okay? So then I responded, I'm no great defender of Obama, but I'm a huge fan of the truth. And the truth is that you can make almost anyone sound extremely foolish by quoting them wildly out of context. Just take one inartfully worded sentence, leave out the several sentences that were spoken before and after the incriminating sentence, and, you are, and, and there you go. Conservative talk radio and Fox News are off and running. To which Joe Kelly Lavasser responded, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Matt, go drink some more liberal Kool-Aid. Wow. He said it. Deal with it. It's all over. He's all done. Here's why that comment offends me. Um, to suggest that because I disagree, because I see this differently and I have a different read on it, that that automatically means that I'm drinking liberal Kool-Aid. It couldn't possibly be. It couldn't possibly be that I have a mind of my own. I have an intellect. I'm able to analyze the situation myself and disseminate that data and information and come to my own conclusion about it and what it really means and how it should be interpreted. No, 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 it couldn't possibly be that because I'm questioning a Republican towing the Republican line of conservative talk radio and Fox Spews saying that this means that Obama is a socialist and he's saying if you're successful, government did it for you when that's obviously not what Obama was saying. Because I dare even question that, that automatically means I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I don't have a brain of my own. I'm just another liberal mindless automaton walking around just going around going along with whatever the liberal narrative is, right? Actually, aren't you an independent? I am an independent. Well, so you're not liberal or conservative. You're in the middle. Well, that is correct, Glenn, which is why I then replied to uh, his comment, I love how just because I would rather have substantive debates based on actual policy instead of giving into the soundbite culture where every little thing anyone says is taken wildly out of context and manipulated, and both sides do it, I'm told to, quote, go drink more liberal Kool-Aid. I'm not even a liberal, but question anything, and that's how the right reacts. Sign of the times, I guess. Because the truth is, and Joe Kelly Lavasser, had he not just made an assumption about me and about how I feel politically, just based on me sticking up for the truth, the truth being not taking things out of context, he would know that I don't like when either side does it, and I have defended... Uh, multiple times uh, situations where Romney has been taken out of context. Now, if someone, if I posted something on Facebook uh, taking something that Romney had said and, 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 uh, and observing how the left uh, takes a comment of Romney's and takes that out of context and thereby distorting it, which they do because both sides right. do it. I think the right's more blatant about it uh, and more brazen, but the left does it too. Yes. Everybody does it. Um, so if I posted a comment about that, for example, Romney's comment about, I like firing people. Oh, the left went wild when he said that. Now, of course, if you listen to the audio, you know that Romney was talking about if, if, uh, if someone is providing services for you, you should have the right, if the services that they're providing for you are not accurate, you should have the right to fire that individual or that company providing those services and find someone who can give you the service that you're looking for. And he says, I like firing people who aren't providing me with, with uh, the adequate services. Right. And of course, the, 
That is a great quote. I love firing people. Yes, but of course, uh, you know, the left took that, took those words. I like firing people and said, oh, see, Romney, the job destroyer, the guy who at Bain Capital would take over companies and fire everybody and break up the company. He's admitting it right there. He's telling you, I like firing people. That's the real Mitt Romney. He just revealed himself with that quote, right? The left took that and they ran with it. And I said, and I've said it on this show, I don't like that because that is blatantly taking Mitt Romney's words out of context and twisting them into something that he did not mean. He was clearly talking about health insurance and he was talking about if your health insurance provider is not providing you with adequate service, you should have the right to sever that relationship and go find another health care provider. That is what he was talking about. I don't like when either side does it. And, you know, if I had posted something about that on Facebook, would that mean I'm drinking conservative Kool-Aid? Would, 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 would liberals all see that and say, oh, Matt, go drink some more conservative Kool-Aid. I'm not a conservative. You know, I don't consider myself a liberal or a conservative. I think I'm pretty centrist overall. Um, I have viewpoints that would fall into both ideologies. I also have some libertarian views on some things. First of all, uh, more think, so lately, but I don't think the conservatives would drink Kool-Aid because it's too cheap. They probably drink something more expensive. Yes, I think you're right. I think you're right. I, uh, I hope I didn't offend anybody by saying no. that. I'm sure. I'm sure they don't serve uh, Kool-Aid at Theos. Uh, I yeah. <laughs> I do love the irony that uh, by by painting you as a liberal, he's pretty much drinking from the conservative Kool-Aid because that's their tactic. Of course. It of course. Is. So everyone's drinking Kool-Aid right now, apparently. But you know what their biggest fear is? Both parties. Gay marriage? No, no. But that's one of them. But their biggest fear in society right now, in, in, on the political uh, uh, route, path, is that in this country, as in this state, as in this city, you now have more people registered undeclared than Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. That's their biggest fear because now they're saying the people are waking up and they actually have their own mind and they're deciding for themselves who they want to vote for. And both parties cannot win any election in this country, no matter how big or small, unless they have we the independents. And we're all independents here. Right. That's right. So be careful what you say about the independents. We know who we want to vote for. Yes. Well, actually, I don't know who I want to vote for. No, but you I'm will. Saying, but I will. And you won't let neither party put you on the sidetrack. You will decide yourself right. according to the facts. Right, absolutely. He has great backgrounds. What's that? <laughs> Our good friend Corey J. Turner, the mediocre comedian, has been posting in the social stream. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, I missed that. He also says... Uh, Hey there, ladies. Looks like a mat sandwich. Yes, I am the. Oh, we're in Studio F. I'm the, nasty. I'm the meat and the mat sandwich here in Studio F. And uh, he also uh, two days ago he posted something about Van Hagar. Oh, um, that was during our VE episode. That was yes. Uh, by the way, I am now opening Skype. Oh, goody, because I want to call. We uh, we all love the sounds that uh, Skype makes, so uh, please listen uh, carefully. I, I always enjoy this moment. And here we go. That's a good one for you, right? It is. It is. Here it comes. Love that sound. It's like popping a cherry at the end. Chris Chris will now... Uh, I will now call. Because so this is I can also hear the... great sound. That is Chris calling uh, Skype. And does everybody have their own sound, or is it the same sound? That's pretty much the same sound, I believe. Hang up! There we go. So uh, if anyone would like to Skype with us, IPM Nation is our Skype ID. Corey J. Turner, Mediocre Comedian, if you would like to Skype with us. He has a show coming up on IPMNation.com, by the way, along with his co-host, The Salty Seaman, uh, Sleepy Time. Still gets me every time. <laughs> Salty Seaman. <laughs> Sleepy Time coming soon to uh, IPMNation.com. Really looking forward to that. I've been to the studio, and it is quite remarkable. So, And uh, Corey was with us uh, last week, right? He was, mm -hmm. he was here with us. Yes, so. he was. And he is welcome anytime, Corey. Uh, feel free to Skype with us if you'd like. And, and I'd uh, uh, just like to reach out to Corey and let him know that if he needs any assistance with that, uh, just let me know. I'd be happy to help out with your show. Yes. And uh, let's That's see. That's what we do here. Volunteer, folks. We help those who need help. Absolutely. Which reminds me, Glenn's going to need help on Saturday if anybody wants to volunteer. I am going to need a lot of help on Saturday. Yes. You can contact him at queencityexaminer at gmail.com. Or call me. Or call. 
We got to send them up with a Glenn at IPMNation.com. Oh, that's address. a good idea. Yeah. Yes, you need a Glenn at IPMNation.com. We'll make that happen. The IPMNation.com didn't come in today. I I googled it and they said that they couldn't they, they couldn't find it. It's IPMNation.com, right? Mm hmm. Hmm. You googled it and you couldn't find it. It wouldn't it wouldn't show it. So I have to try it again. IPM and I couldn't find your card. I was looking for your card. Nation.com. Comes right up. Wow, I don't know why I didn't do it in our computer. Why didn't you just go into your address bar and type in ipmnation.com? Yeah, why don't you do that, Glenn? I didn't want to lose what I was working on. Oh. Is God bowling? God is bowling. All right. Uh, we have God he here. He's, 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 he's bowling. Um, so, uh, and, and anyway, just uh, I, I just wanted to uh, say that, you know, I, I want to be clear about what offends me about what Joe Kelly Lavasser said to me. I'm not offended at being called a liberal. I do have some liberal positions. If that makes me a liberal, so be it. But uh, you're, I think you're offended. So I don't mean to speak in terms for you. No, not at all. It, it sounds like you're offended at the accusation that because you, you're standing up for this one particular candidate that you're being lumped in with, with liberals. And when you're not, you are quite clearly a centrist and an independent. It's and not. It's not even the being lumped in. It's it's the Kool Aid comment. Right. Yeah, I don't think it was in, necessarily. Uh, in, in, you, you weren't necessarily. Um, and uh, it's an accusation that you're going to vote for Obama. You just said right. that what they were saying was not the truth. Right. It was taken out of context. As they and do it, the same thing with Romney. Yeah, and yes. it also suggests or implies that liberals who drink this Kool Aid cannot think for themselves. Yeah. Right. When it's been my opinion, my opinion that liberals tend to be of the smarter variety <laughs> than some of the Republican pundits that I've heard on Fox News, on Rush Limbaugh, uh, commentators, their the ditto heads as they, they're called mm -hmm. aptly right. on his show. Uh, but I, I must say, I commend you. That is perhaps one of the most profound, well thought out responses that I have seen on a Facebook posting. Thank you. That is just, and it's not, it's not something that somebody else typed up and that you just shared with everybody. Right. That is by far, uh, I guess, yeah, sorry, profound is the best word that I can put for, uh, I can use right now because my brain is not working. Uh, but it is very smart, very intelligent, very well thought out and I, I, I was peeking. I saw kind of what his next response was after that, that he had yeah. just repeated the talking point. Of, oh, of course. Uh, so that's that's it in a nutshell. That well, That's his response is, I'm just going to repeat what I said, and huh, I'm done. Well, I think he knows. Look, he strikes me as a smart guy. Yes. He I think he knows. I think he knows. He understands the game. The game is take your opponent's words out of context. Yes. He's not stupid. He knows what Obama meant. He knows what Obama was really saying. I mean, hey, if I'm wrong, then uh, I'm giving him too much credit. But I'm assuming he is smart enough to know what Obama really meant, but he's playing the game. This is how the game is played. Here's what bothers me. Obviously, the Kool-Aid comment offended me on a personal level because I do think for myself, and I draw my own conclusions, I don't drink anyone's Kool-Aid. I spend a hell of a lot of time Joe Kelly Lavasser, uh, tearing down both parties and the two-party system in this country. So I'm not a liberal Kool-Aid drinker. Um, you know, it's funny. If you do it to the opposition, the opposition, the other side is happy. If right. you do it to them, they're not happy. Right. I think and, we've just and, developed and, our own party. That's it. The smart party. That's right. And, the and, intelligent and, party. And as an independent, if you, you get your own mind, and that's what the both parties fear. Yes. There are too many, the majority are now independents. Yes. And now they think for themselves. They don't right. have the parties just drag them into their games. Sure, They're sure. We're tired of games. Well, we are tired of games, and this is the larger point that bothers me. I mean, I talked about what offended me personally, but here's the larger point. We need, it, it, it is crucial, and this is part of why I, I don't like the, why I opt out of the two-party system. It is crucial that we begin immediately to demand better as Americans from our political quote-unquote leaders, um, from everybody involved in the process. Because we, what we have now, they treat it like it's a team sport, Republicans versus Democrats, and 
this this sort of petty this this taking this game of taking things out of context and then just repeating them over and over again and sort of saying see see what they said hear what they said see it's it's petty it's cheap it's childish it's distracting i want i'm serious about this we need to be having discussions mature intelligent discussions and debates about policy about specific issues, about the values of the candidates, um, about what their their vision is, about you know, and and it needs to be that, and not these stupid petty debates about oh Obama said this, what a moron, and oh can you believe Romney said that, what a dumb thing to say. It it can't be about that. We no. need to demand better. It needs to be a real, mature, intelligent conversation and a respectful one. You know, where where people, in, instead of, because, you know, we've reached a point now where it's not just uh, people uh, agreeing without being disagreeable. That is long gone. Long gone are the days when, you know, Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill would have their ideological battles, but they would find room to compromise, which is a dirty word now, in, you know, for, for the good of the country. Gee, imagine that. And at the end of the day, they could go have a drink together. Those days are long gone. Now it's nothing but hate. It's nothing but vitriol. Um, I wonder if some of it has to do with race. I mean, I, I, I hate to bring that up. I will say but, it, yes. Well, I, you know. But you know, you know what's so disturbing is that what both parties are doing in telling their stories and taking things out of content is trying to tell that we, the American people, specifically the independent who actually vote, and there are bigger in numbers and say, you know what? We're going to control you. We're going to tell you what's good for you. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's good for you. Now, they will call out the dictators in other nations for doing things like, things like that. Mm -hmm. But they don't call themselves out. They do this very same thing and it's sure. a different tactic, but it's the same thing. Right. They try to get it in your head that that's exactly what he said, even though it's not what they said. Mm -hmm. And they both do it, both the Republicans and the Democratic Absolutely. parties. It's their agenda. It's not the people's agenda. Absolutely. And just, I did this on my Express Edition, and I'll, I'll do it again here. Just to prove my point that I'm not just drinking liberal Kool-Aid, I'm going to go two for one. I, I talked about how I felt Obama was being taken out of context. Then I gave an example of how Romney had been taken out of context. Just to prove my point, I'm going to give two examples of how Romney was taken out of context. The other example, I, I have the clip. I'm not going to bother to play it. You've all heard it ad nauseum, where he said, I'm not concerned about the very poor. He was talking about how, uh, you know, his focus is on the middle class. He feels that the middle class in this country is who is, is suffering the most. He said he's not concerned about the very poor because they have a social safety net. If there are holes in the safety net, he will fix it. But he's not overly concerned about them. He's more concerned about the middle class. Now, please understand, I'm not defending Romney. Do I personally think that he's really... Concerned about anybody? No. I, my perception of Romney is he's just a rich guy who thinks it would be really cool to, to be leader of the free world. I don't think he really cares about anybody, really. That's, Privileged. That's my, guy. yes. That's, that's, and it's his privilege to, to run this country. Absolutely, yes. It's but, My opinion. Yeah, and, and that's, my, that's my opinion, too. That's just my perception. I don't know what's really in the man's heart. That's just my perception of him. But, again, when he made that comment about not... Uh, not being concerned about the very poor. The left went wild with that, and you heard that over and over again. And he even clarified when he said it. He said, look, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just to be clear, you know, I'm talking about it's the middle class who I think is slipping through the cracks, and the, the very poor do have a safety net, as well they should, and I will fix it if necessary. Um, again, I'm not defending him, because I think he's full of shit. I don't think he cares about the middle class or the very poor, but this was another example where his words were very blatantly taken out of context repeatedly. So that so I don't like it when either side does it. And just to make my point, for anyone who thinks I'm just drinking liberal Kool-Aid, that's two examples of where Romney has been taken out of context, and I don't like it. All of it, all of it, it, it debases the entire process, and we need to demand more. It should be a... a a better conversation than the one that goes on politically. Substance, a, a conversation yes. with substance. Yes. And here's the the sad but not so sad reality. Depending mm -hmm. on how fast uh, technology, smartphones, everything can catch up with the mainstream media, 
people like us, we need to take this to the people. We need, we need smart, intelligent conversation, people who can have that, that conversation of substance, go to the airwaves, go to Ustream, go to these free services, start broadcasting, start having these conversations, and take over the MSNBCs, the Fox News, the, even CNN, the one that's in the middle, mm -hmm. which even their pundits still take things out of context. Mm -hmm. So depending on how fast that can happen, and you know those networks are going to hate it because it's all, for the most part, sponsor-free, or you spend three ninety nine a month so that you can watch this stuff for, for free mm -hmm. without any advertisement. Go out there, you do it as a volunteer work, or maybe maybe you're even smart enough to get yourself some sponsorship to go out there and spread the word. Now, mm -hmm. the problem, the other problem with that is, which one do you choose? Because right now, you've got the big three. You've got the MSNBC, the CNN, and the Fox News. You go to Ustream, and there's millions sure. of broadcasts going on out there. Well, if I could make a suggestion, you go to QC News. QC News would well, be actually, my top. What you just said happens right here in our own city. Uh, there... Um, you have the local papers. You have a couple of local papers, and then you had a couple of yeah. But the useless leader, sorry, union leader, you can is union most liar. certainly still a, a conservative newspaper. Yes, and then you yes. have the, the the hippo, and then you had the Queen City Examiner, and then you had the New Hampshire Herald. And the point is, we decided that the Queen City Examiner was going to be an independent paper, and we strived really hard to make sure that it's not a Republican or Democratic. Or Christian it's everything mm -hmm. all opinions are accepted and then we will correct you if you're wrong and you make the decision and it offends so especially some of your politicians how dare you mm -hmm. tell us we were wrong mm -hmm. you know uh, and even to this day they're still trying to control little peanuts like us mm hmm yeah absolutely but they won't because we're unleashed. Unleashed. Because we have a, 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 we have morals too. You know, we may be this and that, but we have morals just as much as they do. Now, yes. do you do you find that um, the gaffes made by Romney uh, during his worldwide trip, <laughs> uh, do you feel that any of those may have been taken out of context? That those sound bites have been playing because I've actually heard uh, some some of the liberal talk shows play the full clip where he's talking to Brian Williams about how disconcerting it was. No, that's legit. Uh, th there's no way to take that out of context. He insulted the British. Or one of his, his campaign uh, staffers in Poland who said, kiss my ass. Yeah, kiss my ass. This is a holy yes, side. You know, show some funny. respect. <laughs> if that place was so holy, and he wanted to stop, they wanted him to stop yelling questions because you're supposed to respect the place, why did he yell out, kiss my ass? Yeah, um, I'm going to give, and, that, and just to clarify for anyone who doesn't know, that was not Mitt Romney who said that. It was one right, of his campaigns. Campaign campaign yes. That would that'd be very but, interesting, actually, if Romney no. lost but it. But it was a campaign staff member that was at, trying to have you shut yes. up. Yes. It was a re right. respectable. Romney was at the tomb of the unknown soldier yes. in, Poland, in Poland, and he was there specifically to baptize that unknown soldier into a Mormon. Aha! Pretty well said. I'm starting something. Yeah, that's a good... No, that's a good internet rumor. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And that's why that, he was there. That'll catch on. And he when did... he put the note in the wall in Israel, yes, he was putting that note to baptize all the Israelis oh, to be yeah. a Mormon. Yes, that's good. That have passed. Yes. Because apparently you have to wait till they have passed. Yes. Bill think you're evil. <laughs> well, I don't think Mitt Romney's... Well, no, evil. right now the Israelis have to wait to stop hating Mitt Romney before they can hate me. Because mm. apparently that he's he has started he sparked something there as well. Well, the Palestinians don't like him, right? Because he Good. said these the reason the Israelis are so successful is because uh, well they're Jewish. Mm. Well, because of their culture is what he said. He might as well have said because they're Jewish, and of course the Palestinians uh, took offense to that. Because but for us, for for the globe, not for the globe to take the Palestinians and put them all in a regulated fenced in sort of because of the walls all there area. Doesn't solve that. That's not freedom. That doesn't solve that. We need to have a discussion, not destroy each other. Discuss the issue. If 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 if, if Ireland would have done that, they were doing mm -hmm. that for a while. Yeah. They finally came together. Yeah. Because they finally decided that this killing wasn't working. Right. So let's talk about it. And now they're living in peace. Yes. More in general, they are. There's yes. Some, there's some disagreements, 
But Israel and Palestine has been going on for over a thousand years. When will it end? They need to have a discussion and come won't. together. I have no hope for that no. situation. I'm an optimist by nature, but nah. Yeah. No, Every campaign out. promises something else about Israel and Palestine. It's been yes. going back for decades of campaigns. So yes. I don't think we'll see it in our lifetime. Yeah. Um, I did mention, uh, well, I, I, I do want to touch on this. Uh, another Republican, uh, and you don't see this on the Democratic side. This is interesting. Oh, there I go. I must be drinking Kool-Aid because I'm about to criticize Republicans. But uh, th th this is from Huffington Post. Uh, Steve Latourette, uh, retirement. I wonder if he swears a lot. In I was just wondering. That's one of the best names I've seen. Probably in French. He swears a lot in French. I'm going to be Chris Latourette. Fuck! Yes. <laughs> Par sorry, sorry. Oh, 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 oh. Before, Not on this family it's channel. before 9 p.m. Uh, Ohio GOP representative announces he is leaving Congress. This is a very short article, but I'll read this uh, quickly. Uh, this is from Huffington Post. Uh, Republican Representative Steve Latourette of Ohio, a nine-term lawmaker and a close confidant of House Speaker John Boehner, said Tuesday he was frustrated with the political stalemate in Washington and won't seek re-election. Latourette told reporters in his district northeast of Cleveland that the political environment in Washington works against compromise. <gasps> that's that dirty word again. Yes, yes. Yeah, but Snow said, and that's why she's not running. Olympia, Olympia Snow. Snow. Yeah. Just one of many examples. Of this many. is a pattern, folks. This is oh, not yeah. a new thing. Uh, he said, quote, it's been my experience that compromise, cooperation, getting something done is not rewarded. The group of people that are interested in that type of result, the circle's becoming smaller and smaller, unquote. Latourette cited in particular his support for a bipartisan budget compromise known as Simpson Bulls, which I would have loved to see that go forward, but it didn't, uh, which got 38 votes in the 435 member House. Uh, he said, quote, there's only so many times you can run your head into a cement wall, unquote. Latourette was elected during the Republican wave in 1994 when the party seized control of the House after decades in the minority, uh, Newt Gingrich's uh, revolution there, mm -hmm. he is a member of the House Appropriations Committee. His retirement comes about three months before the November 6th congressional elections. Latourette was re-elected in 2010 with 65% of the vote, so pretty popular guy. Pretty popular, yeah. The 14th, Congre uh, 14th Congressional District narrowly went for Republican John McCain in the 2008 presidential election. La Tourette joins more than three dozen House members who have decided to retire. Holy cow. 43 Republicans and Democrats have decided to leave the House, and nine lawmakers have lost in primaries. So uh, there is a pattern here. I can... And all for a similar reason. I yes. can honestly say that, that that article frustrates the hell out of me that instead of putting up the good fight and trying to compromise, they're being bullied out of their jobs. That's exactly mm -hmm. what's happening. And, and it's on both sides because oh, yeah, the left sides. has gone yeah. so far to the left and the right is relying on the Tea Party candidates mm -hmm. yeah. that, that swept the 2010 yeah. elections. So now we're going to see more of the same. Uh, and I, okay. that's, uh, that's kind of a Republican talking point too, but we are going to see more of the same right. in 2012 where... Yeah. The, the fringe right and the fringe left are going to get elected because they don't want to work together. Mm -hmm. the, the people who are voting for them know this. It, it's insane to me. I'm sorry. It's just you know what's even more insane, insane is there, we're, we've, we've all heard the Democrats and the Republicans, and especially in the last month, it's really getting big. Projections by both parties, and they blame each other about we're going to go over the cliff come January. And what are they both saying? Well, especially the GOP. We're going to wait till we have a new president, and then we'll fix the problem. Well, we may very well have gone over the cliff by then. Mm -hmm. But that's not important. It's more <laughs> important that we, that they change the president. The only thing I, I'll say it again, as I always do, I didn't elect my uh, state congressional representatives to keep the president from having a second term. Mm -hmm. You and you and I, the voters, decide if we want Romney or Obama or right. whoever else might be in the third party. We're losing right. our jobs. As as citizens, we are losing our jobs because we're the employers. Well, we're the ones who put these people yeah, in right. their jobs. Right. And it sounds the same thing as what the city of Manchester did, and it backfired this week. When they, they're going to be electing a new charter commission mm -hmm. to rewrite the charter, and do what's right for the city. 
But the politicians in the city, the border mayor and all of them, the majority of them, weren't very comfortable of the people making that decision, even though it's our power. So they were going to take it away from us and have a referendum and change the school district from a district to a, uh, a department, and hopefully that will be a threat for those that are elected saying, now you know where your place is, make sure it stays aboard. Mm -hmm. Well, the committee yesterday said, no, it's not your job. It's the elected people that you're going to be electing in November to do the charter. Let them do it. Right. Now, I mentioned to see in a couple of weeks when the automatic board meets in August, how they're going to huff and puff about that. The bulliness has got to stop on both sides. Yeah, and people who, and people now who aren't planning to retire, who are looking for re-election in come November, those people who use the terms like compromise, let's have a discussion. They're the ones who are not going to be re-elected in 2012. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's it's again it yeah, makes absolutely people. no sense to me. You're and right. maybe I should dumb down maybe i should stop caring but that's the problem no, too is once they there's, want you to do that. once there's a lack of empathy in this country that's that's when real problems start to happen that's but right. their yeah. apathy seems to be the direction that this country would be going in but no matter what happens no yes matter, uh, there's no, no app for it who well, cares no matter how the parties <laughs> draw themselves in to get the independents not to come out to vote which is exactly what they're doing mm -hmm. if we abide by their both their rules the democratic and republican parties there will be apathy, and there will be riots in the streets. I mean, we, it comes to a point that you can only take so much. They're not working for the agenda of the public. They're working for the political agendas of their parties. Right. Well, ultimately, and they, they line their own pockets and, and, and their own uh, careers. You know, I, I agree with what Jesse Ventura said. They should all have to wear NASCAR outfits. Yep. Uh, with the, uh, yeah. the the emblems and patches. But of that didn't get passed. Don't... You know what God... <laughs> no. they, that, <laughs> that, that, there, was, there was a bill up That's that right. says... Was there? Yes, it, that it, said, it uh, tell us who these sponsors are. If you're donating yeah. these large amounts to Super PACs, thanks to Citizens United, uh, you're thank, going to tell us thanks who to is Supreme donating Court this for money. for allowing that to happen. Yeah. Uh, that was a pass. mistake. What's that? The Supreme Court allowed that to happen. Yeah. That was a mistake of the Supreme Court. Now, what no galls me is that these, these people on both sides of the fence, that's what I call them, both sides of the fence, uh, they insist that the voters aren't very well educated, so they're going to teach us what needs to be done. And they don't get it. That's why you have so many Republicans and Democrats that are defecting from their parties. They're not joining the other party. Right. They're becoming undeclared registered voters, meaning they want to vote they want to find out the truth for themselves. Yep. They're tired of the rhetoric, but they're not stopping it. Or worse, on the other side, they're the ones who don't show up. On so yeah. we yeah. have to go out to vote, because if we don't, we'll be the big losers. The people will be the big losers. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this today, and this is kind of a downer thing to say. Debbie Downer. <laughs> wah, wah. But I wonder, is there, <clears throat> Excuse me. is there ultimately a solution? I mean, we, you know, we talk about how you know, we need more independence and try to reduce the, the you know, or you, you're never going to get rid of the two-party system, but try to damage it as much as possible. But in the end, is it even fixable no matter what you do? And I wonder this because is is the problem systemic? It is systemic. Or, well, here's my other, the, the other thing I wonder, or is does the problem actually lie within basic human nature itself? Because is it possible that just people, human beings, are just generally not able to act outside of their own interests once they get power? You know that expression, well, it's the fear. absolute the power, power corrupts, corrupts. absolutely. Yeah, right. is, it, is it possible to ever get past that as human beings? But it's the fear from both political parties that are giving to the people and, and they're making you feel like, you know, what bothers me is that, is that, is that, for example, we talk about going over the cliff, and the Republicans have already said, we'll take care of it when we have a new president, which only tells me one thing. They're not doing their job. Now, the Democrats are doing the same thing, but the point right. is, is this, so if you have the Republicans, if the Republicans win in November, the same thing that we have now will happen. There'll be no change. We'll get worse off. If the Democrats win, well, do you remember when, 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 when Bill Clinton was president? It was the House and Senate were Republican. Mm -hmm. 
for some strange reason, they decide to get along and work on some important bills like get rid of welfare as we know it. That used to happen then, yes. yes. Cooperation Com and compromise. compromise, yes. And in this administration, even, even when, or in the last yeah. administration, the Congress, the Congress are not doing their job. I keep right. telling the public, you can't, today somebody said on one of the national networks that uh, the price of food because of the corn being burnt is going to go up. It's Obama's fault. Well, since when does he control the weather? We need to stop right. this nonsense. Did you when he said when he went into a strip club and he said, "I'm going to make this bitch rain." That's yeah. when he. Uh, that's when he controls yeah. the weather. The parties need to work together or get out, and, right. and that's what's going to happen, I think, in <laughs> the end. And that's why you see a lot of people registering as independent. To yes. go back to what Matt, what what you had asked, I think it, it's most certainly the mix of, in my opinion, the mix of power and a great epping salary uh, no question yeah, about together. That. and so what's happening in the middle class these people these people do not want to see these people rise up because then they're not so much of value anymore right, right. both when, in power and it well the salary they can do whatever the hell they want to do with their yeah. salary you know what joe kelly lavaster would say if he was here he'd say hey that's class warfare cut it out why do you hate rich people my biggest fear is this year. because i don't have money when you have, <laughs> plain when, and simple bitch when, when you have congressional legislators who pass a bill to cut severely the the subsidies of poor people's meals in schools. Mm -hmm. And then the next day they pass a bill to give themselves an additional $300,000 a piece. I mean, uh, $300,000 for the rich to have more tax cuts. You say, wait a minute, you cut that service to feed the mouths of the poor and you gave it to yourselves. Hmm, that's doing the right thing? Well, part of that, too, is, I mean, one of the things that frustrates me about conservatism, and I, you guys have heard me say this a thousand, a thousand times, is that, that I think what's endemic in conservatism, one of the things that I have a problem with is just, you know, zero empathy for anybody. Right. You know, if, if you're poor, it's your own fault. Yeah. And and maybe it is, but, you know, so, so and, it can be the, the mm -hmm. it can be because of poor life decisions. But, you know, what about your kids? It's not their fault. That's right. right. Maybe we well, should can be them. on the Democratic side. Too. Oh, Those who think for them, only for themselves as soon as they reach that congressional me, or Senate. But it does seem more definitely. prominent in the conservative or at least mm -hmm. they they're more. Forthright is that yeah, the word I'm like? You could call it that, I yeah. guess. But I, I think what scares me the most is that if Romney gets in and the Republican Party come in in a force where there's there definitely will be no compromise. It'll be all one-sided. Mm -hmm. what, what they will actually do, and they're they're not giving you the plan, but look what they're doing right now in the Congress, and that is the plan. They're going to cut all these services, the entitlement services mm -hmm. that people have worked for mm -hmm. and are paying taxes on. Yeah. And they're going to give themselves all these tax cuts. So they're they're cutting from the very people who are paying the taxes. The Ryan And plan. they're giving it themselves. Right. And these safety That's nets. That's not the right thing. We're going backwards. These are the same safety nets that President Hopeful, Mitt Romney, is the one that he was saying that I'll put the holes back if there are any. I don't believe it. But what's going to happen if they're not there anymore? What right. if those safety nets aren't there? I don't right. believe it. Hey, that's one less thing he has to deal with when he's I'm president. I'm sorry, I can't believe it when you have a Congress today that is not doing the right thing, and the next day they give himself a tax cut. Wow. That's doing the right thing. You're yeah, going to let let's, children starve and give yourself some money. And let's, right. let's talk about things like women's contraceptive. Let's let's go back to the 1950s. Yeah. Should women and blacks and gays have the right to vote? Probably not. No, let's it, give it to the right rich yeah. white men. Sorry, sorry, I'm on a tangent. No, it uh, does no, feel it, like it's it, going that direction, though. It's that's why weird. People, that's why you see people, seniors, you see uh, women, you see uh, uh, the poor, you see the minorities, you see uh, gays, you see people that are being 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 left behind. They were brought up, and now they're being left behind, mm -hmm. uh, saying, what's going on here? We're not improving anymore. We're going backwards. Today, who lost the 45% of their income in the last 10 years? It's the middle income going down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And who increased their income? It's the 1% going up. And then can't go higher than 1%. You're already there. 100,000 people, the, the richest 100,000 people, get the biggest tax breaks. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with that? Well, speaking of that, uh, sorry. What, what, what are you sorry about? Oh, I was I was just about to say something, but oh, go ahead. No, the the other thought that I I had as we're going backwards in time is, have we never as a country given religious freedoms 
because that seems to be what everyone's complaining about, especially with this Chick-fil-A debate, that their religious freedoms are being squashed. Yeah. Well, no, it's consumers who have decided for themselves, well, okay, outside of the mayoral and public officials that have come out against Chick-fil-A. Boston. Uh, when Chicago. we as people, as consumers, decide that we want to boycott or we want to have a Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, that's our decision. We're not squashing anybody's religious freedoms right. or religious yeah. rights or right to say anything but, in religion. Why is that coming up now? Why all of a sudden, when we have a black president who has said over and over again that I am a Christian, do we paint him as a Muslim and say that he is he is one of the ringleaders of taking away religious freedoms? Oh, Joe, Joe Kelly Lavasser uh, mentioned that uh, Obama is a Muslim on so, his I, Facebook, but, in a post on his Facebook. That's page. that's just one thing I wanted. I was thinking <laughs> yeah. as we're going back was because that's yeah. what the whole women's contraceptive mm -hmm. thing comes yep. from. It comes but from like space. It, is, it comes Chris. from like Christian conservative background. Yeah. Yes. You know what it is, Chris? Chris is that uh, yes, we do allow because it's part of our constitution, uh, freedom of religion. But it has to work two ways, okay? You may not like homosexuals. You may not like sin. Doesn't the Bible itself, I've read it many times, I still do. It says, hate the sin, love the sinner. Right. Today we're having a oh, turnaround. Oh, and of course, it's God hate. is love. It's hate now. Right. It's, they hate the sin. They, they maybe hate the sin, but they also hate the sinner. Right. And if you shove it down our throats... You're never going to make change because they will resist it. And that's exactly what they're doing. And they think that they are the almighty God. I believe in the freedom of religion. But you know what? It works both ways. You can't say you're all going to believe in this form of religion and all the other religions are worth nothing. Right. You right. Can't, it doesn't operate. Yeah. That's not yeah, exactly. freedom, of, freedom religion. of religion. Let me talk as I'm a Christian. Oh, but don't let these Islamists or these Muslims talk. Yeah, or the right. Jews, don't let them say that's what they have to say. Right. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. Well, we're going to teach, we want to teach religion in school. Oh, wait, you want to teach Muslim too? No, no. no. It's no. all about you, control teach my religion. and greed. Yeah. And who's getting it? Right. The 1%. Yeah. And I it's would offensive. just say, just in, in defense of the homosexuals, because I love the homosexual people, Jesus never said anything in the Bible about homosexuality. And if you can prove me wrong, that Jesus Christ said anything for or against homosexuals, let me know. I know, Actually, hey, we know, all know about the book of Leviticus, yeah. but I'm talking about Jesus Christ, right. the Lord and Savior. Actually, there, there are two saints in Europe that were homosexual that were hung and they become saints yes they were and and we oh you meant hanged they were hanged yeah well they were hung all right but anyway they were hanged <laughs> it's my french yes but the point is is that why are they not if if they are if they are saints in the catholic eyes in europe why are they not saints in the catholic eyes in america oh well, wait a minute it's the same it's the same same religion i belong to that religion so yeah. i'm not a well I'm, I'm just saying it's not fair right well welcome to the united states of puritism that's what it comes down to no. So, okay. You said it, I didn't. Most mo <laughs> most Christians want very little to do with anything Christ actually said or didn't say or tried Their to teach us. Didn't I think um, I, I, Christians, I, Christians love irony. That's why they call themselves Christians, even True. though they want very little to do with anything. Yeah, take Christ. the name Christ out of that name. Yeah. You're now Ian's. Yes. <laughs> um, so before I interrupt, I think you probably, I, I don't know if this is what you're going to discuss, but just before I came in, uh, I saw a news alert from CNN talking about the tax breaks, the Bush era mm -hmm. tax breaks. Why do we keep blaming Bush for the things that he did? Uh, <laughs> I love that conservative talking yeah, point. So Why do you keep blaming Bush for well, tonight, Hannity, putting us into two wars? <laughs> Sean Hannity? Yes, he said that, that it's not the tax Bush tax cuts that caused the problem. It's the Clinton tax increases that caused the problem. It's funny, when Clinton was in office... We, we had, had a surplus. We had a surplus. Yeah. But yeah. what what had just passed in the Republican majority House is they have decided to pass the Bush era tax cuts again. But that includes tax cuts for both the rich and the poor. And there's much speculation and probably very good speculation that this is not going to pass the Senate because the Senate, which is the Democrat led. Yeah does not want to see tax breaks for the rich. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I just have to look at it so this if way. That's what, I didn't no. know if that's what you were going to, to discuss. But. You, you have to look at it this way. No matter who gets in, if they don't stop doing 
if they don't start doing what's right for the American people, for the majority of this country, mm -hmm. and not say, well, we're going over the cliff, let's go over the cliff, we'll take care of it when we have the next president. What kind of a baloney is that? Right. It was just like saying, I have a bologna sandwich and you got a choice. Do you want the one that's good or the one that's molded? Oh, we'll give you the one that's molded because you don't deserve the one. We're the ones that are 1% are going to get the one that's really tasty. Yeah. I mean, come on, grow yeah, up. Yeah, the 1% is did exactly they really who think, is going to elect they really the next think, president. Yeah. Did they really think that the 99% of the people are that stupid? I'm hopefully not. I hopefully not. Don't. I, I'm hopefully that they will... They will not choose that. that don't right. be the lemmings because if the Congress goes over the cliff, don't be the lemmings. We that all fall go over the cliff, and don't eat the uh, moldy for, bologna. Yeah, yeah, moldy bologna. Yeah. Well, uh, actually, we're coming up on uh, nine p.m. So, yeah. um, I might. Uh, do we have a list of just? Uh, yeah, no. It's too Whatever hard. list you want. I do have that. This one article. Do we have a quick article about Romney that kind of summarizes Romney's uh, gaffes in uh, his overseas trip? Uh, I don't. I don't, I don't know if I saw the that. article. I've been hearing it on the uh, the liberal show that I hear in the morning, which is the Stephanie Miller show. I don't know. I'm sure he'll show up and get it again next week because it's not going to go away. Let me just Google really quick Good Romney. Gaffes. Yeah, it's a long article though. I just want like a quick summary. Romney gaffes in Europe. Like it's funny, the Bit fuel, the, the the gas, the gas prices are going down again. And you see them, you see the uh, the GOP saying they were saying it was the Obama's fault that it went out. <laughs> Can I say yes? Is it, is it his fault? <laughs> is that Mitt it's going Romney down? a loser? Yes. <laughs> he may not lose the election, but he's right. certainly a loser. I will tell you one thing: for anybody who runs for office, they're not losers. Because they have the guts Did Rebolka lose the Olympics? Do we know yet? Who his dressage horse? Who? His, it, oh, I'm not sure. Horse. They are back, so the event is over, but I haven't heard. Uh, I'll, I'll read some of this quickly. This uh, article is called Lost in Europe. It's from Slate.com, uh, and Applebaum wrote this. Um, Ignore the gaffes, they'll soon be forgotten, and they don't matter anyway. The real problem with Mitt Romney's trip to Europe wasn't that he sounded less than convinced about the London Olympics or that he gave short shrift to Palestinian culture. <laughs> The problem was that the very idea of the particular trip, where he went and who he met, at least in Europe, was based on an outdated and increasingly misleading narrative about U.S. foreign policy. In Britain and Poland, at least, Romney appeared to think he was paying visits to allies who are deeply disappointed by Barack Obama and who long for a return of American leadership in the form of a new George W. Bush or, even better, a new Ronald Reagan. He imagined he would find soulmates in the British Tory party, just as Republicans used to do long ago. He imagined that Poles, freshly released from communism, would all thrill to a speech about John Paul II, Solidarity, Lech Walesa, and the Cold War. He was wrong. Yes, many abroad are disappointed with Obama, and yes, the administration has made a number of awkward mistakes with Europe, and with Poland in particular. Yes. Uh, those Romney met again, polls in particular, were flattered that he came, and they appreciated the speech. Contrary to media reports, he made a good impression on the politicians he met everywhere. But Romney, or perhaps his advisors, didn't seem to realize that the disillusionment with U.S. leadership in Europe isn't solely the product of the current administration. New Europe, the British, the Spanish, the Italians, the Central, Amer uh, Central Europeans, the pro-American coalition of the willing, the countries that supported the U.S. invasion of Iraq in, defense, in defiance of France and Germany was a concept that fell apart a few years after its formation. Mm -hmm. um, you, you haven't heard anything from the Coalition of the Willing no. since Obama's presidency and even actually uh, towards the end of W's. In fact, right. today, Hannity made it very clear that it is Obama spending in the $5 trillion since he's been in office that we had to borrow from China. Well, how about the ten trillion that we borrowed from China when Bush was in office? It doesn't work both ways, does it? Nope. No. Not like Glenn. It does not work both ways. <laughs> Fine. I believe in fairness. Yes. 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 I'm a true independent. Um, that's for sure. Well, we'll uh, we'll wrap up on that note. It's now 9:01 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone here at QC News Studio F. Studio well, let's announce what's going on this week. Let's uh, well, let's get to what's going on tomorrow. Tell us what you're doing tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's big. Uh, the first lady, Michelle Obama, will be in Manchester, and mm -hmm. we've been giving credentials to televise it live on the internet, uh, the telenet. That's what I call it now. The telenet. 
I haven't heard that term before. It's I like that. Yes. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll be lucky enough and get an interview. But even though we don't, we're at least going to have her speech uh, on the telenet live mm -hmm. uh, as it happens. And uh, we uh, we have four people on our staff, and I'm very happy about that. We worked hard to get it done. It's going to be a lot of work, but uh, it'll be worth it. And I just hope that on the other side of the, uh, of the aisle, the GOP, specifically uh, the Romney people, the campaign people, when he comes to Manchester, he'll allow us to do the same thing so that we can do a fair thing and let you decide what they're saying. Yes. Kiss my ass. Well, you know, you can't. Well, I'm not going to kiss your ass, your ass, or anybody else's ass. We're not in a holy place. I'm why, not even going to kiss my it? ass. How's Although that? Although an ass is a holy place. It's oh, hard. yes. Good it is, point. It is so hard to be an independent <laughs> that media was awful. <laughs> when they don't allow you to be independent by not yes. giving you the challenge. And so I'm going to keep challenging them, saying, if you don't give it to us, don't blame us. You're the one that kicked us out. So I want to congratulate the Obama uh, campaign people for putting us back into the realm and allowing an independent. Otherwise, which would not have been directed, the independence media finally coming into the picture. Remember, it is the independent vote that's going to get these people elected. Yes. That is absolutely true. Uh, and, of course, uh, Friday night. Uh, well, actually, Thursday. What do you have going? Uh, so we talked about, oh, tomorrow is Thursday. Thursday. I'm sorry. We also, the, the, what we also had the, Southern New Hampshire. We also <laughs> had the, inter, yes, the Southern New Hampshire. For those of you who, don't, who couldn't get tickets, watch us tomorrow at 515 Live. Between 5 and 515, we'll be on live. QCNews.com. And will it QC automatically pick up on yours? And mm -hmm. IPMNation.com. Yes. Strangely enough, there are two independent stations that are going to carry this to the QC News Network. So if you couldn't get there, you're going to hear what she said out of her mouth live and not what the news reporters on both sides of the fence are going to say during the night's news, late night news, of what they think she may have said. Mm -hmm. Hear it from her mouth. Yes. QCENews.com and IPNNation.com. Yes. Now, at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, yes, even though we'll get there just in time, we do have a second set of volunteer staff who are going to rush over to the Veterans Park to do in-town Manchester until I can get there and Wow, you're just going to be a busy man tomorrow. Yes. And there Friday was a, is. There was a third event, but we didn't, we couldn't, we can't do it all. No. So Friday, we'll let a large, uh, we've got two co-hosts here. From uh, 8 to 10 p.m. And then Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're probably going to have to tape it and give it to you in the following week. Because we are still figuring out, trying to figure out our sponsorships for our internet. And, Did you say uh, fingering out? Figuring out. Oh, figuring out. I'm Do you sorry. know, I will, tell you, nine, I will tell you one thing. In this thing. holy place. I will tell you one thing. <laughs> when you go to Providence, Rhode Island... Boston, Massachusetts, we seem to make it work. We mm -hmm. get sponsors. When we come to Manchester, every time we do something, we have three people trying to ram us off the road. Mm -hmm. And that only tells me one thing. They don't like our challenge, and we're not going to stop. Yep. They, they keep trying to ram us. They, I think they see you, actually, I guess all three of us, because we are part of the QC News family as a threat. We are a threat. Yes. We want, we want, we're unleashed! We're, we're unleashed! unleashed. <laughs> You gotta do that in 3D sometimes. Yes, yeah. yes. And uh, Chris, of course, Sunday nights at uh, Sunday nights VE. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody who uh, tuned in on Sunday nights episode. You actually boost us up from number seven on IPMNation.com to number four. Wow, yes. that's a big increase. So that, that was is... a lot of people that we had joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd also want to say just a quick, uh, I guess, a quick congratulations to a gentleman by the name of Anthony Anthony Picolia. Uh, for those of you who have been listening to this endless debate about Chick-fil-A and whether or not uh, they are an evil corporation or they're just uh, simple-minded folks, uh, Anthony <laughs> Picolia is a sole franchise owner of a Chick-fil-A at the Pheasant Lane Mall here in Nashua, Nashua. New Hampshire. Uh, we are going to be, Manchester will be hosting a uh, gay and lesbian event here on August 11th. Uh, at Veterans Park, uh, which hopefully QC News will be able to be a part of. Uh, Mr. Picolia, who is the owner of this franchise, uh, is a supporter of gay rights. He has made that public, and he is actually going to be donating free chicken sandwiches Very to good. the gay and lesbian event here. So congratulations, Mr. Picolia. Yes. You have stepped out of the box. Uh, now, will the owners of the entire franchise be there? 
Piccoli? No, no. But <laughs> Mr. Piccoli has also said that for his franchise, he has hired gay and lesbian staff members. Uh, he's a supporter of gay marriage, so he is Good. he is not drinking the Chick Fil A Kool Aid in this case. <laughs> and I think that kind of, that way, it's it's appropriate to say that. Yes, yeah, uh, absolutely. So thank you very much. We appreciate your help with that. And uh, catch us on Matt and I. Glenn is our producer for uh, VE on Sunday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern on IPMNation.com with my co-host Dan Ranlett as well. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's, ba it's what I say is for immature audiences only. Yes. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for tuning in tonight for the television edition of Matt Connerton Unleashed. Don't forget this week's Express Edition. 30 minutes or less, delivery always free. Hot and fresh. <laughs> yes, that is already up. Uh, that went up today. And, of course, the live radio edition, Saturday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern. And uh, so I will be back here at QC News Friday night for Willette at Large with Glenn and Chris, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, I guess that's everything. So don't forget. And you can see us tomorrow yes. at 5.15 Live with the First Lady. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and to our QC good News. friends com. on Wednesday yes. nights, uh, Masterdam, I don't. I actually believe they're sh they're re-airing an episode tonight, but oh, soon. Yes, stay they tuned. Their 100th episode will be broadcasting to be determined. I actually spoke with Mr. Ryan Gorman today, and he oh. told me that they are taking some time off. They're going to get ready for episode 99, possibly take a, a couple more days off or a couple more weeks off, and then the big 100th episode extravaganza, which we've all been invited to again. We had a blast at their Christmas episode. So IPM Nation and QCE News will be back again at the TV23 studios for their 100th episode. Excellent. Very, very excited about that. Yes. Yes. And uh, so that's going to do it. We'll wrap it up. Uh, Glenn, you can, uh, you can go turn us off if you'd like. Right. Thank I'm you. Turn you off. Wow. And Glenn R.J. Well, that's going to turn us off. just bring the studio with us when he's, he's sitting in Getting... with us and we can just be like, click. Yes. It's a good idea. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Oh, oh, we're, we're still, still on. on. Hi.